Hey everybody and welcome to this week's Design Cinema. This is Fain Zhu speaking and this week we're going to be tackling something that seems like a lot of you have been asking which is a painting that's done completely from scratch. And in this case we're not going to use any photo plates, we're not going to use any photo textures, it's going to be nothing. The only thing that we're going to rely on is Photoshop and the brush and the colors, that's it. So um, this painting is going to go from pretty much nothing as you see here on a, on a canvas all the way to a pretty finished and presentable level. Now when I started this painting I actually had no clue what I was going to paint and sometimes this is a good working method in which you let your design instincts take over and find shapes within your canvas. Now this doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you start this and halfway through you figure eh, that's not going anywhere. There's no, there's no interesting shapes but sometimes in this case it sort of works out. But even for a painting like this it took me a while to find the final composition. Uh, in the beginning we I have a structure, I have some color palettes but it just wasn't coming together and you'll see how this whole thing kind of gets put uh, all into one as we go forward on this video. So this, uh, some technical stuff on this, this is being painted right now at very low res but at a film ratio of 235 which is typical of your the movie theaters uh, ratios and the color palette comes from the palettes that's been pre-mixed that you guys have seen some of the other other videos where I have the swatches on the bottom and so those swatches work well with uh, within each other uh, within the canvas so I'm kind of just picking random colors from that uh, palette and put it into the painting. Because those are all pre-balanced. Those colors are balanced to work within uh, each other within the painting. So the perspective I chose is a total horizon uh, with a three-point uh, point above the uh, sky. Obviously, with kind of a uh, bird's eye, I mean, warm eye view, I guess, or looking up at something. Now, this creates some difficulty in terms of plotting out the perspective because not only is the horizon tilted, we also have a three-point kind of converging toward the top. Uh, so you see, actually, see me correct this painting in a little while here. We we'll try to fix some of the perspective because we're talking about convergence here. That means the vertical lines on the right side, especially, is going to go kind of right now. If you don't converge to the three points, it's going to go straight up and to the right. But if you're going to start converging that, it's actually going to go straight up and start tilting to the left. And because the horizon is tilted, the line is actually going to become vertical, straight 90 degrees to the canvas, which creates some kind of awkwardness when you're painting because you know that it's a three point, you know that you know uh, the convergence of the three points is supposed to kind of uh, converge to the top. But in this case, it's going straight up because of the tilted horizon. So hopefully that makes sense to some of you guys who uh, who understands perspective. Now, not everything's perfect, right? When we do something like this, not every perspective perspective is perfect, not every color, uh, everything is perfect. The, the important thing is the end result, you know, does it look good? And uh, so you balance a lot of that stuff with fundamentals. At the same time, you also use a lot of instinct and experience to make the whole painting work. Uh, Okay, let's talk about design a little bit. So again, I started this kind of raw without really uh, an idea where I'm going to bring this painting to. Uh, but I have these two central towers in the middle. And those start to ground the design. I start to see a gate thing. Oh, let me just back up here. You can see here I'm uh, correcting the perspective by tilting the horizon back so it's no longer tilted. And fixing the perspective and then tilting the horizon back to a uh, slanted angle. right? And then fix all the little white space that occurs from that. Okay, so anyways, let's go back to uh, this central tower. So they look like a gate, some kind of welcoming area or some kind of focal point and that could be the main uh, area where uh, some kind of scene is going to take place. Now I don't want these towers to be the selling point. They're way in the background. They're going to be our, uh, you know, just support uh, structures and support designs to actually sell the real design which is, hasn't been painted yet. Uh, and at this point I actually don't even know what that's going to be. So right now I'm just working on the background, getting the color palette in there and working on these towns. Now this towns is starting to look kind of ragtaggy, which is kind of cool. I want to get that idea across. These towers in the back, I want to I want them to look kind of ancient, very old, um, built out of rocks or some kind of sculpted material. And these towns below are sort of like that, those Brazilian um, stacked homes that you see on the, on the side of hills where they're kind of ragtag, built out of different materials. Yeah? And because the, I wanted this to be a very sci-fi scene, and this kind of contrast is great within design because we're introducing something that's very, very old. This kind of technology that's older than uh, our current day Earth, but yet the technology that's going to be flying around and walking around is very, very advanced. And this works very, very well, in, uh, especially in sci-fi type of films, which you've seen in Star Wars, for example. The uh, planet of Tatooine is very, very ancient. you got these kind of uh, sandy huts, uh, these kind of buildings that look like something from the 1600s, but yet they possess technology that's far beyond what we have here on Earth. But that creates very, very nice uh, mood, right? Because you can feel it feels very tangible. It feels very gritty. At the same time, the technology is so new and so different that it sells you something that's very familiar to you. You know, you we all as Earth people, we understand that kind of world. So when you introduce a spaceship, you somehow believe in it versus a world that's just so out of our uh, league. Imagine uh, someone from the uh, 12th century 
you know, looking at the Earth today, they they won't even recognize anything, not a single thing, you know, except for the human beings. The the change is too much. So I think this contrast is great. It creates that kind of uh, just analog uh, feel. Okay, so here I introduce the first sci-fi element, which is a big barge or some kind of uh, cargo or human loading ship. It's also ragtaggy, similar to the town below, uh, but yet it's, it's, it could fly. So it's got this high technology within it, some kind of anti-gravity thing, right? And that, that just works well w within design. You know, it's one of my favorite things to see. You know, I think movies like Blade Runner and these type of films, they all follow the same philosophy, uh, which inspired uh, many of us in, within the industry. You know, you look at Blade Runner, it's very old and it's got like, neon signs and stuff, but yet they have flying cars and all sorts of really cool technology. Um, okay, so here I'm just kind of balancing this guy out. I wanted two of them, uh, so that way you could create uh, a sense of 3D space, the further one and the one that's close to us, by having this gap in between. We could start tricking the eyeball to think that there's a great distance between the two, and because these guys are so huge, then therefore there's a big distance between them and the cameraman. Right, it's all an optical illusion, uh, these kind of paintings. Here I'm balancing the black and white, as you guys see many times before. So right now I still don't have a selling point. These ships for for a while were my selling points, you know, as far as what this painting is trying to tell, right? Um, but I still didn't really like it, and later we'll start adding various elements to try to find a different selling point. And these ships essentially become the background elements. But right now they're still taking central point as far as uh, what this painting is about. So I'm getting them rendered out, they're giant cylinders, so let's follow some of the basic rules of cylinders, which is a core, bounce, and main light source. This is a pretty overcast day here, so we're not going to get very uh, much strong shadows. It's just kind of very blown out, uh, overcast, white light coming from above, you know, kind of making everything get about the same values. Very foggy environment, so that way we can push these towers way, way into the back. Yeah. So at this point, as I paint the ship, these ships are not that hard, they're kind of barge light, they're kind of grungy, they're kind of take, uh, falling apart kind of thing. So I use this time to think about what I'm going to do for the rest of the painting. What am I going to add in here? What kind of elements should I put uh, while your brain is sort of taking a rest from, at this point? Because right now the painting starts to take shape. The pressure is starting to disappear. It's no longer one of those where it's like, oh man, it's not going to work. Let's uh, let's start again. Right? This is probably workable. This is probably savable. So now the relaxation part comes in and you can start thinking about, okay, how do we now finish this guy? You know, we, we took it to this far. What do we do with it? Okay. So I do like the color palette. I think the, the mood is quite nice I, I, uh, as far as when I was working on this. Yeah? So now let's just start uh, bringing the real elements. Okay. Here's my foreground element. I want to bring in uh, a device where I can see the scale of human beings. That always helps to sell the scale. So I just put this little tower, some kind of observation deck. and Therefore, we could put some people around this. Right? And that's going to help sell scale. Uh, people relate really well with other people, and we can recognize a human silhouette very easily. Uh, like you put a head and a shoulder and some arms, we all know as human beings that that's another human. And when we see a human, we know how big that is. And so therefore, when you have something in a scene that's close to you, that's a human being, and something that's far away with a little head and a shoulder, it, your brain automatically thinks that there is a distance between the two. <clears throat> and that's how we create this kind of optical illusion. All right, so here's a bunch of guys. So the scene, I kind of want to capture that... Uh, it's almost like a sci-fi version of those ships, those immigrant ships that come into New York, uh, where everyone's sort of watching and they kind of come into that harbor and the Statue of Liberty. That kind of feeling, you know, where something's arriving from another land or some other distant planet, and these guys living in this kind of, uh, you know, high-tech but yet low-tech village is watching these ginormous uh, ships come through this gate. Yeah, and that's kind of the point of this painting. Yeah. So right now the composition is still very much divided. It's got this kind of left-right division. Nothing mixing them together and that's going to be something I'm going to struggle with for at least another uh, while on this painting. You'll see me go through that in a, uh, various stages. Yeah. So here I am going back to the uh, ship, painting some of the engine exhaust to give it some scale, making some huge uh, ships but yet the engine is quite small to just play off that sense of scale. Yeah. I don't want these giant tubes in the back of them you know, that's you know maybe half a kilometer wide splitting out ex uh, exhaust. That will be too big so I'm kind of making tiny little exhaust fumes. They're still pretty big I guess. Okay, at this point, we're still painting at 2,000 res, 2000, about 2,300, right? Uh, film, just film res. And later, when we finish this painting, this is actually going to go to about 10,000 pixels wide. Yeah. At this point, it's very tempting to throw in textures, right? Because that's my usual work routine. Because at this point, you can start putting some teeth into the canvas, throw some textures in, throw some rocks textures, throw some mechanical textures, some metal textures, to just give that grip to paint. But the purpose of this painting is to show you guys to do one without relying on anything. And so it's a little awkward, uh, because in a regular work routine, I'll definitely start to throw it in at this point. Uh, it's about ready at that stage. 
Okay. Okay. Here's the first attempt at putting in a subject matter. So I'm putting these kind of spider mechs in, which we end up doing actually, but different design. I didn't like these guys for some reason. I think the, the because they're too round, they don't contrast much with the flying ships that are coming in. Those ships that are coming in, those barges, they're very round themselves. And I think by putting two round objects together, they didn't create enough of contrast for me. Um, but I still struggle and put these guys in just to see if it works. Yeah. So here I'm just kind of thinking, going, okay, is this gonna work? You know, these things are very quick. You just kind of block it in, so you can see visually, does it work? Yeah. If it works, we go with it. If it doesn't, just delete it, and you waste literally about three, four minutes of time. And so that's a good trade, versus struggling with the painting and not knowing where it's going. Just just paint it in, see what it, see what it does. Yeah. So here I'm cloning a few versions. Yeah. Now, why do I want to put this stuff in? It's because I want to create a, I guess, a parallax between something in the foreground and those giant flying ships. I want something to overlap them. Because if I don't overlap, we actually don't know how far that ship is from us. Uh, for example, that could just be a foreground element, uh, you know, even though yeah, we all know it's a ship flying over us. But really, you can't tell because it's, it, nothing is going on top of it. right? It's blocking the mountain behind it, that tower behind it. But there's nothing blocking it. Therefore, it could just be a, you know, if you blur your eye, it could just be a, maybe a finger of an alien that's in, ca in the camera. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we want something that's in front that's much, much bigger than us. That's something that's human beings. And if that's blocking the ship, then we know that that ship is far away in the distance. Uh, hopefully that sort of makes sense. And that's just like the foreground element of the tower on the right side right now. That's blocking the town. Therefore, the town is further from us. Right. So here's another attempt. I keep trying to add something in there, like do I add some ships flying in? And these ships will will uh, go on top of the giant barges. Yeah, But that didn't work, so I go back and paint more ships, maybe put some above, right? So this is all kind of stuff that you have to struggle a little bit sometimes, especially with these paintings where it was not planned, it was just kind of painted uh, from scratch. Yeah. So I abandoned that idea for a while, so let's go back to that later, let's at least finish this painting uh, to a certain degree, let's work on the background a little bit. I think at this point the resolution has been brought up to about I see, about 5,000 pixels wide, I believe. Yeah. So I res these up once in a while. Whenever Camtasia is saving, I, I tend to uh, res these guys up. Yeah. This is actually done on my laptop. So uh, at 10,000 pixels, the laptop struggles a little bit, but that 5,000 is still okay. So, All right, painting some vehicles, just some indication of stuff that's happening here. Yeah. I really haven't gone to detail painting yet at this point because there's no subject. If I'm gonna spend time painting something very, very refined, I'm gonna spend that on the subject matter. In this case, in my in my mind, this gate nor these giant barges are my subject. So I don't want to spend you know hours painting in all these kind of refined details until I find the actual selling point of this painting. All, right? all this to me right now is just background. All this is the environment trying to sell what is actually taking place there. Okay, so here's another tip. Now I'm gonna put in these kind of flying hovercraft things. I go, okay, let's try that. Let's see if maybe some of these dudes are like police officers or something. Maybe they're on their way over there to check it out. Yeah, so all these people are checking it out. So you can see me trying to put these guys in and make it still work in the composition. So at this point, I actually thought this would might be okay. Um, actually, if you watch the, you know, if you scroll to the very end and look at the painting, the space they take up is actually very similar. The the, the uh, composition or how much value they're taking up in the painting is actually very similar. Uh, but the final one's actually much bigger. Right? But the point is the same that these guys are going to human scale. We could see there's a person riding on this thing, and he's right next to our camera, and it's going to fly in parallax over these giant ships. So we know that those giant ships are now behind this guy here. Yeah. Therefore, it's no longer could be like a giant alien finger or something like that, right? So that's kind of the illusion we're trying to pull off here. Okay, so actually, you can see I actually work on this guy for a little bit here. Not not too long. In real time, that's just about three, four minutes or something like that. And see if it works. If it doesn't, we delete it, right? So I hit that layer for a while and just go, okay, I'll think about that. Let's go back and pay more background, right? Whenever I'm doing this kind of background stuff is letting your brain think, okay, is that going to work? Should we commit to it? Right. And sometimes that is the hardest part of being a designer, uh, especially working freelance, uh, where you don't have anyone uh, next to you. You're just kind of doing these, and hopefully uh, the clients will like it when you turn it in. So you have to self-art direct many, many times, because this composition, no one's going to tell you how to do it. You're going to have to do it on your own. And sometimes you have to trust your gut instinct. It's like, is that going to work or not? Right. You can't bug your clients going, hey, you know, I think you can put in this or put in that. Very, very few times they want to actually do that, because that, that's a very buggersome. If they hire a professional, they expect you to deliver the final result. Right? You make those decisions. If you ask them, they're not the designer. They're, they're not hiring you to ask a thousand questions, right? They just want something cool. So you have to self-art direct. So uh, here we go, uh, painting in some of the rocks. At this point, it's very, very tempting to uh, to put in textures because it just saves so much time yeah, to just throw in some rocks back there. But uh, for this painting, we have to restrict ourselves and not go into that route. 
The clouds in the background, those are actually uh, Photoshop brushes, right? So they look kind of photo, but they're just brushes, which is made from a photo, I guess, in a way. So that's the only thing you hear that's kind of photo-ish, even though it was from a brush, right? But everything else is all raw, as you guys can see. Yeah. So continue to balance out the values, the ships. This composition, if you just step back and look at the scene, it feels empty, right? It feels very empty on the middle left section and the lower right section. It just feels like these two are not connecting. And that's something that as I paint this, I knew in the back of my head that we have to fix. So, but in the meantime, we don't want to sit there and just look at it and stare at the screen. It's a waste of time. So let's just painting, paint stuff that finishes these guys off, you know, paint some details on the ships and those various elements. Okay. So technical, I think at this point we're still at about 5,000 pixels wide. Uh, just a few layers, not too many layers at all. all. At this point, all the stuff is collapsed. We're probably looking at one or two layers maximum. Yeah. Later, as I paint the foreground elements, the selling point, those are going to be on a layer for quite a while until we get the background balanced. But at this point, this is all background to me. So if it's all background, then let's just keep it on one layer yeah. and paint as we go. Okay. Here I'm adding some lights to give it scale so you can see that these guys are ginormous, yeah, little pin lights. And we want the audience to kind of reminisce when you see this of something like the Titanic or some kind of giant ship coming to New York. The same similar scale that these are big, giant, slow moving man made machines. Right. That is a very interesting sight to see if it was in real life, right? Something that all the people come out of their houses to look at. Yeah. So whenever I paint this, you, you always want to absorb yourself into the scene. Put yourself there. You know, what if you were there? What would you see? What what would you smell? What would the light be? What would the temperature be? Uh, the more you put yourself into the painting, the, I think the easier it is for the content to actually come out because your brain is sort of telling you uh, in a kind of imaginary way what's hap actually happening there. So. I always do that whenever I paint something like a scenery. Just put yourself there, and then you can sort of uh, you know, imagine what is actually taking place. You know, these people, the noises, the people talking, and uh, you can see some kids on the lower right kind of corner. They're probably yelling at these things, and these ships are making some ginormous engine exhaust sounds. Yeah, all those things help in in terms of the creativity. I think. Yeah. So here, still painting some some various highlights, details, getting the uh, the down, town to sort of read. I actually have some plans to make the uh, gates a little bit more elaborate, uh, but I decided to focus on our foreground element instead. So I was thinking maybe we make these gates very, very elaborate, very, very well painted and extremely detailed. And then we just leave it at that. Maybe that will be our selling point. But the back of my mind, I still didn't want these guys to be the main selling. I want something else to be in there. So I didn't spend too much time. Because see, yeah, I started to do some stuff on the gate. Right, some kind of port. Okay, let me see if there's any other technical stuff uh, as far as this painting goes. Uh, yeah, just a few layers, uh, 5,000 by about maybe 2,000 or something like that. Just do a film ratio and just multiply that and keep increasing the size. That's how I do these ratios. Yeah, start with 235 and then just keep going up. Yeah. So uh, again, depending on your resolution, your screen as well. All right. Okay, here, so here I'm adding the actual subject matter, these little crabby walking robots. I did these guys while Camtasia was saving. On this laptop, it takes a, at least about three minutes to save uh, one of these two gig uh, video files. So while that's happening there, I'm painting little test paintings and this happens to look right. And as soon as I put these guys in, I knew this is the composition they were to go with. It just felt right. It felt balanced. Now we had to sacrifice some previous painted stuff in order to pull this off. This big guy that's in front of the camera is blocking pretty much the entire second ship and is blocking the entire midsection of the big ship. Now that's a decision that's hard to make at first. You're like, oh man, then are we going to lose the feeling of those giant ships coming in? Are we blocking too much? But I wanted that parallax. I wanted these guys to go over the big ship. So it's a sacrifice I was willing to make in this case. It wasn't easy at first because you look at it it's like, man, do I really do this or do I not? Should I just put a guy standing there and just call it a day? Or do I really want to paint these guys in and block all the stuff we painted earlier? So in the end, I decided, you know what, this looks right. Compositionally, this feels pretty good. So, and besides, the ship is part of the background anyways. And I think it still looks like giant ships flying in. So let's just go with it and block it. Right. So then this element here, this ship, uh, this mech I'm painting right now is now our main selling point. So now I'm going to start detailing him up and get all the highlights and various uh, materials in there and indicate this guy up. So at this point now we res this up I think to about 10,000 pixels wide which is pretty high res so you're going to have to have a pretty decent computer to run a Photoshop file at that resolution otherwise you're going to get some uh, pretty bad slowdowns. Um, but to, if you don't use too many layers, it's not that bad at all. On, let, on this laptop, you see that there's almost no slowdown at all. It's because we're dealing with probably only three, three four uh, layers. At this resolution, if you have something like 10, 15 layers, you're, you're talking about some extreme slowdown here, right, if your computer is not fast. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start detailing this max out. And this gives us a great scale because these guys are gonna start painting some human beings next to them. And those human beings we can then compare to the other human beings on the right side. Those human beings were compared to the buildings, and then those buildings are then compared to the uh, spaceships. The spaceships are then compared to the giant towers. So we have this pair, this kind of a shifting in size as we go from close to far, creating a vast uh, kind of epic scale type of thing. Okay, here are the human beings for scale. These these people have to go in there. If you don't put the people, we have no idea how big these guys are, right? They, just like the giant spaceships, they could be very very far. They could be very very close. Even though we're parallaxing with the spaceships, we still don't know. This could just be a tower that's in the middle of the city, and it could be, it could be the size of a uh, you know the Sears Tower or something like that, right? So um, we put some people, and instantly that gives us a scale. Okay, now just painting details in. So next week there's probably not going to be a new video because I'm doing something. Uh, I'm doing a private workshop for uh, for a company next week, so I won't be able to do a new design cinema. That's why I did two in a row. This uh, we just have uploaded one last Friday, right? So here goes another one. All right. We also have a grad show coming up later in the day, so we're very busy here. So let's just try to get these out of the way. This panel is really uh, fun to do because sometimes these kind of random paintings, uh, I guess I should call them, where you start these without absolutely no clue what the end result is going to be, and you get something kind of cool coming out of it, it's, it's a pretty rewarding experience because you sort of just found these on your own, sort of just painted by instinct, I guess, versus you keep thinking about the composition, what's the subject matter, all that, and sometimes it doesn't come out the way you think it is, then you're sort of disappointed, right? Like maybe in your head you're thinking of this massive uh, spaceport with all these thousands of ships flying in, and you start painting it, it doesn't really come out. You're like, eh, man, that's not as good as I thought. But these, there was no pre-planning anyway, so then you're sort of uh, more surprised. I guess it's going in with low expectations or something and uh, getting something out of it. A uh, similar thing. It's kind of fun uh, when we work in this way. Okay, so now detailing out. Now, as far as details goes, I didn't want to paint the foreground mech, make him all detail, and then clone him two times. Notice I clone it before I start to paint because I want the detail levels to drop as we go into distance, just like how the human eye works. When you're focusing on one object, you're not actually focusing too much on another one. They're gonna go blurred, right? So like look around your table, look at your computer. If you look at your computer screen, the background becomes blurred. If you move your eye and look at something next to your computer, like your mouse or keyboard, then the screen sort of becomes blurred. So that, that's how that's how the human eye works. As you look around your room, certain things go into focus, certain things go out of focus. So in a case like this, I'm also bringing certain things into focus, certain things out of focus, right, all around the painting. So it feels more natural. And there's little hot spots where the eye can focus and then drops off, focus and it drops off. So it kind of creates a kind of relaxation thing and a little bit of realism in terms of where the human eye can focus. If we detail the whole thing out, where every single rock, every single mech, every single spaceship is detailed to the nth degree, the painting will feel very, very flat and actually quite tiresome to the eyeball, I think. Well, at least that's my personal belief. I think uh, over detailed painting actually is quite boring. I like paintings that has a little bit more um, life to them, a little bit of looseness to it. Okay, here's a very light color balance. At this point, we're almost about to finish this painting. This is, um, you know, the only thing we have to add at this point is just detail level. Yeah. So I want to make sure the color is balanced. Throw some cool light into the uh, foreground here. Warm up the background slightly. Yeah, put more more volumetric fog to really get that epic scale going. They get the sunlight sort of coming in and hitting the street below. Right, these epic towers. It's kind of like, I just want to capture one of those kind of classic sci-fi sceneries. You know, you look at it, you know that this is sci-fi. So, which is my subject uh, favorite subject matter, as you guys could probably tell. All right, more details. Uh, adding some rock foreground because I gotta make sure I pull this guy out so it's in front of the elements to our right, those little guard tower with people in it, right? Because they're both sort of foreground elements, but in this case, this foreground is also our selling point, which typically exists in the midground uh, areas. Um, so I gotta make sure this guy has enough detail and extraction to pull him out in front of the towers to the right. Okay, some other details. Because remember, I started this with that crystal brush I used, the, the one that kind of doesn't make any edges. I do that on purpose to, to get the values down versus clean edges. So that way my eyeball doesn't get trapped by seeing very straight lines. But the hard part of that is once you start to refine, you have to get rid of some of the uh, the very, very rough edges, right? We don't want to clean everything up, but we definitely want to get rid of some of it to give us nice, clean uh, intersecting edge. Right? And that's going to distinguish the forms of one from another. So a couple more mechs, so these are kind of, I don't know what they are, uh, police or whatever. Just kind of watching the ships coming in. All right. So this video is almost coming to an end, so I hope that you guys learned some stuff. And as far as doing a painting all from scratch, right, you don't really need to rely on anything. This can, this can, this this painting could be done in Photoshop 7 if you wanted to. It's just very basic using default brush and just painting. 
right? Any textures you want, you paint it by hand. So now this process I don't use all the time, just to keep in mind, I do use textures quite a bit. So uh, anyways, you know, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. as a sign our name and get a date in there. And uh, I'll see you guys probably in about two weeks with a new tutorial, okay? So until then, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.